Hi students, welcome to HSC Biology and Module 8, Non-Infectious Disease and Disorders. This is video number 6. We're going to start looking at genetic disease. So in this section we're going to investigate the cause and effects of a number of different types of non-infectious diseases and in this first video we're going to uh, concentrate our attention on genetic disease. So what you need to be able to do is to define non-infectious disease and look at a number of examples. We'll provide a couple on this particular video and then in the subsequent videos to be able to contrast, uh, sorry, to be able to contrast genetic diseases with other non-infectious disease and also perhaps uh, have a specific case study that you've uh, got that you can use uh, when you're answering questions about non-infectious disease. So we've already already spent a lot of time talking about infectious diseases and um, our body's defense against them, the types of pathogens that cause them. Now we're going to look at this other group of diseases which uh, really go by this very general name of non-infectious diseases. All sorts of disorders that can occur, um, changes that can occur in the body that have nothing to do with specific pathogens. Or at least um, are not directly caused by pathogenic organisms. And you'll see that there's some um, kind of, I guess, um, interesting interplays, particularly uh, when we look at genetics. Uh, Non-infectious diseases are not contagious because they're not spread by pathogens, then we, um, we regard them as being non-contagious. But that doesn't mean that they can't be passed on, and that is one of the things that we're going to be looking at in this particular video, which is around uh, genetic disorders, which can actually be carried from one generation to the next. But that is not to say that they're passed on in the same contagious way that infectious disease are. We're going to look at three main categories of non-infectious disease, and that includes genetic diseases, which is the subject of this particular video, nutritional deficiencies, and environmental disease. And we'll also look at cancer as a specific case um, because it's one of those things that can actually result from uh, any combination of each of these three different types. One thing that we have noticed, and we're going to talk a little bit in this topic about epidemiology, and we've, we've mentioned this previously when we were looking at infectious diseases, but epidemiology is really the study of the incidence of disease. One of the things that we've noticed is that as we've looked at um, the patterns of disease over time, infectious disease is actually gone down in incidence where non-infectious, so this is infectious disease, uh, whereas non-infectious disease incidence was going up. And of course, these um, general trends were very much the case uh, until we now have an exception, which is our uh, pandemic of COVID. So that has certainly changed um, the situation a little bit in regard to the various incidents of infectious and non-infectious disease. One of the reasons for that has been um, an increase in our understanding of medical uh, science, medical technology, uh, use of antibiotics and vaccination programs, um, general hygiene practices, good eating, uh, clean drinking water, all of these have contributed in one way or another to a drop in infectious disease incidence. At the same time, uh, longevity, and in particular, some environmental factors, started to come into play, including some genetic, um, genetic disorders associated with uh, later in life. And we know that um, if there's certain types of genetic disorders or if there's, if there's a type of disease that's going to make you die young and die before you reproduce, then that particular disease is not going to be passed on to your children. But if something comes later in life, we know there's a number of things that come in uh, later in life, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, those sorts of things. If you live long enough, maybe you've gone past the age where you um, have chosen to have children, then you realise that there is a... Um, that, there's, that you have some sort of genetic condition, it's too late to kind of undo that decision. You've potentially passed those genes onto your children already. With people dying very young when we had poor nutrition, poor health, um, poor quality of water, um, poor hygiene, then sometimes those sorts of things were kind of happening a little bit naturally. Life expectancy was much, much lower in the past. 
But now we live much longer. Um, life expectancies continue to rise. And so therefore, some of the diseases associated with um, older age are now becoming more common in the population. And of course, that changes our epidemiology figures. If we go back a couple of years to the leading causes of death in 2018, and we, we split this up uh, between men and women, and this is the only data that I have to be able to do this with, you can see that the number one cause um, for men was coronary heart disease. Of course, if your heart stops, that's one of the definitions um, of um, decease. And so therefore, um, there can be a number of other contributing factors. But you can see, as I was talking about, um, dementia associated uh, with things like Alzheimer's are definitely diseases that are more common amongst older people than younger people. Cerebrovascular diseases, the so diseases associated with um, blood flow to the brain, um, lung cancers, again, these ones can be influenced by environmental factors. Uh, did the individual smoke? Was there some, uh, is there some correlation between those two things? And chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. And you can see the comparative um, figures for males and females. When we do the same sort of thing, but we look at it by age group rather than by um, gender, then now we can actually see some more interesting things happening. So certain types of diseases, obviously sudden infant death syndrome is only going to occur amongst infants. Um, you can see the sorts of things that are more likely to be um, a concern for people in the teenage age groups. And then as we get further down the age uh, ranges, you can start to see some of these things that I've talked about, uh, cancers, uh, cerebrovascular, coronary heart disease, uh, dementia and Alzheimer's becoming more and more common as we get uh, as our population continues to age. Now that we have all that information, what do we do in terms of trying to link what we know about to genetic diseases or disorders? Well, we've looked at a little bit of, um, of this previously when we've been looking at um, genetic change and heredity. We've understood a little bit about some of the ways that uh, mutations can occur, changes in the genetic code, and the potential consequences of some of those. So genetic or inherited diseases result from any error in the genetic information. And these can be genetically transmitted, particularly we've talked about mutations that occur in the germline. These ones will definitely be passed on um, potentially into future generations. If they're somatic mutations, they can uh, um, obviously cause some problems for the individual. But they don't tend to be passed through into subsequent generations. Now these can be of the chromosomal type and usually we would uh, look at a karyotype in order to uh, understand what's going on and I've got one of them on our final slide uh, or they can be um, genic mutations. So mutations that are occurring in single genes, maybe even just to a single amino acid in a in a polypeptide chain that can cause some sort of a disorder. Now, mutation is something that we talk about a lot in genetic change in that module, module six. So I'm not going to talk about it a lot here, except to say that these sorts of changes that can occur can have either very small but significant or very large consequences on individuals as a result of the, the, the presence of the mutation or the absence of a particular um, gene or chromosome. So here's an example of a karyotype. And a karyotype is basically the whole of the all of the chromosomes sitting in front of us so we can identify them. And when you look at this and you're looking at the fact that there should be 23 pairs uh, of chromosomes. And then you find here we have three copies, which is known as trisomy. And it's trisomy 21 because it's three copies of chromosome 21. This is what we associate with the disorder known as Down syndrome. There are a number of similar types of chromosomal 
uh, mutations associated with different numbers of the sex chromosomes, X and Y, sometimes just a single chromosome, like just an X, sometimes trisomy there as well, so maybe an XXY. Uh, these sorts of things can occur and they do create some quite considerable um, consequences on the on the child and growing adult that's going to develop as a result of each of these different changes. Uh, a number of you guys have already had a look at Down syndrome when you were doing your depth studies um, earlier in the year. Uh, this is one of the things that's really important is that you do have a particular example of a genetic um, disease or a genetic disorder that's associated with some change in either the um, genetic information in the DNA or maybe at this larger chromosomal level. So that's something that we do need to look at in class just to put a case study together. Thanks for watching.